Page 10, Jesu, Joy of Man's Desiring. A very famous melody by J.S. Bach. Myra Hess did a keyboard arrangement of this that a lot of people play. I think I have a recording of it on my other channel. If I do, I'll put a link in the description. But listen to the professionals play it because it's just amazing. It's a beautiful piece. However, let's talk about this arrangement. This is nice too. Three, four time. One sharp in the key signature, one in the key G major. Make sure you can do the G major scale. Probably be, ought to be doing these scales now up two octaves. Now, uh, I'll leave that up to you, but at least do it one octave. Let's check out that rhythm's not a problem. Bunch of quarter notes and dotted half notes, but the fingering, we're moving around here at the right hand. It's coming on beat two. One, two, three, one. Now, thumb. This is another situation where we're taking advantage of repeated notes to change hand positions. We do that a lot in piano. So it's one. Don't forget the F sharp. It's in the key signature. They want you to come here. Thumb. So it's two, one, crossover, two, one. Another fingering you can try if you'd like, the one I typically use, is if you take the first four notes in the second line, you hear, 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 and hear, that is a G chord. So I typically just finger it like that. I, I, you, you learn to recognize these chords in music, and that's so I just hear three, two, one, two, one, three, and I'm back where they are. Just different ways of fingering the same thing. It's up to you on how you finger it. I'm used to doing this. Here, two. So that's what I'll probably do. But the fingering in the book is fine. Second line, or third line, then you're here. Thumb, thumb, two. Then you're doing it again. Now last line. You're here. They want you to do this. Thumb two. Yuck. Let's try this. Thumb here. Go four, one, four. You can actually do three, either one. But this way you, you can reach this more easily. So again, it's here. You can do one, four. Thumb or thumb three and reach down. Either way works fine. I prefer either of those to what they're suggesting in the book though. Left hands, bunch of dotted half notes. Remember a dotted half note is the same as three quarter notes. So whatever a quarter note gets, dotted half note gets three of them. And just connect this left hand all the way through. Put the hands together. And if you hesitate right now or working it out, that's fine. Just try and get the hands to go together. We're here and then here. And then here. Second finger in the rook. down second and third measure the left hand is tied so just hold it down and then you play it so you go through and work out the hands together then go back and get rid of the hesitation so it is a steady beat slow is fine but it's got to be a steady beat as far as articulation goes connect this left hand all the way through just connect it all the way in the right hand, you can lift up That's fine. Otherwise, connect it like connect. Now, when you get down to the end of the third line, last measure here, lift up there. We want a little silence between the first and second beats there. That's like at the beginning, we started on beat two. Well, here it's the same thing. We want it, we're starting on beat two. You're just ending what you were doing on beat one, so lift up. So it's here. You're just cutting beat one a little bit short and lift up. 
Otherwise, you're pretty much connecting the right hand too. Dynamic wise, well, it applies to the melody, and that's the right hand. And MP is mezzo piano or moderately medium, soft, moderately soft, sort of soft. It's not soft, it's just sort of soft. Whatever you think that is. And then you're going to go up to sort of loud for the beginning of the next measure. We'll plan it out because you got several measures to do it. So just stay sort of soft here. You come up just a little bit, a little bit more. Now, that's moderately loud. And stay there. And then you come, third line, come back down. Then you do it again. you come back down to moderately soft. Now they put in a retardando on the last two measures. I disagree with that. But again, this gets back to interpretation. These louds and softs is part of interpretation. The editor or author here is kind of telling you how to interpret the music by putting in the crescendos and decrescendos. Bach, I don't think, put in any of those. So Retardandos are done different ways, and people don't agree. Well, big surprise there. Some people say you retardando until you get like at the end, when it's at the end like this, and you get held out notes. You don't retardando anymore on a held out note. Whatever speed you were going when you play that next to the last measure, keep that same speed for those last two measures. The slowing down has to take place before it, not during it. Because if you keep slowing down after you've done it, one, two, three, one, two, three, the audience has no sense of rhythm in that. You're just holding notes down. But if you just keep the same speed you're going, then they can, they'll maintain that sense of rhythm while you're holding that notes down. They won't adjust it. Some people say, yeah, I'll slow down if I want to, and they do. However, in this particular situation, I think the retardando is in the wrong place. I would think it's more appropriate to put that in the second measure of this line. There's isn't really room, but the idea is it's there. I mean, they could put it underneath the stabs if they have to, because you're going to slow down leading into the last note here. Slow down and get soft both, but once I've once I've gotten my new speed, I'm going to keep it in the last two measures. However fast I'm going, that's how fast I'm going to keep going. So, in my opinion, the retardando belongs in the second measure of that line, and you'll and then once you hit the last two measures, however fast you're counting at that point, keep that same speed throughout. You don't have to keep slowing down, or if you'd rather, you could keep slowing down. As I said, people don't agree on that. As far as speed goes. Moderato is somewhere in the middle, and tranquillo is like pleasant. Think of a tranquil scene, a pleasant scene. It's, it's not exactly a party piece. Uh -huh. Fermata there at the end. I'm just going to hold that out until it feels right, and then I let go. If I do it with a metronome, I'll just double the value and I'll hold it for six counts instead of three, so I can stay with the metronome. I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and all. I don't think the rhythm's a problem. Let's check the notes, even just one hand at a time if you need to. But I'll give us three counts. I'm not going to do any dynamics. We're just going to play the notes. One. Ready, go.
three, one, two, three, hold, two, three, 